In this video, I'm going to be giving you my full ultimate guide to starting a Twitch channel successfully so you do not have to worry about being stuck in the dreaded 1-2 viewer loop. Anyone can create a Twitch channel, but creating one that's successful is nearly impossible, or so they say. I've worked with over 100 streamers directly, and through this experience, I've developed exactly what you need to do in each step of the way. That way, you do not have to stress about looking like a rookie streamer. My name is Twatter, and if you've never heard of me, I typically help people grow with live streaming. I realized that I've never made a video with the full guide of starting a Twitch channel, and if you're thinking about starting a Twitch channel from scratch, this video is made exactly for you. I designed this entire video to be everything you need in order to not only start start a Twitch channel, but start one successfully. With that being said, this video will be split into three sections. Number one, picking where to stream and how you're going to stand out. Number two, setting up and learning my tricks to OBS slash Streamlabs with the best settings. And number three, how to get more viewers to your stream. So let's get right into the first and quickest step. Number one, where are you going to stream? You should not be planning on multi-streaming because that will kill your chances for growth and I explain exactly why in this video here. With that being said, you should choose either Kick or Twitch to stream on. Both of these platforms have their advantages and it depends on what you want to gain from your streaming experience. Once you have your platform decided, you need to think of your branding. There are millions of streamers who want to be the next popular streamer, therefore you need to develop a simple plan on what will make you stand out. Do not put too much thought into this as it could be as simple as a unique name. Branding is an essential part of streaming because of how saturated the space is, meaning far more people want to be a streamer now than ever before, but you can't let that demotivate you. Instead, you need to create unique branding so you stand out in this emerging crowd of new streamers. Now that you have your platform decided, let's get into the perfect settings for streaming. First of all, you need to decide between OBS and Streamlabs OBS. They are both very similar and the settings and controls are both the exact same. However, the only reason I recommend using OBS instead of Streamlabs is if your PC cannot handle Streamlabs. Streamlabs Labs is sometimes a little bit CPU intensive, so if your streams on Streamlabs are laggy or anything like that, then I would recommend using OBS. Side note, I used OBS for the first time in like two years today because I wanted to use OBS to record myself doing the stuff on Streamlabs, and OBS looks way worse than it ever used to. So I'm going to set up a couple different scenes and teach you how to become a pro using Streamlabs slash OBS. Anything that I show you with Streamlabs, you can apply with your OBS. All the controls and everything are the exact same. So over here is what you call scenes. This is basically how you show different things on your stream. For example, like this would be YouTube. And this one will be for, let's just say Minecraft. All right, if I wanted to make a scene of me like reacting to YouTube videos, uh, we should start with a camera. So to add your camera first, you wanna do video capture device, add source, make sure it's the right device. In my case, it's the USB device. Don't judge me, I don't have my streaming set up. Like, I don't have lighting or anything like that. I'm not a streamer, I teach you guys how to grow. Now, something super important. First things first, what you wanna do, I hate how like, uh, basically cameras start out inverted so like I'm looking to the right but it looks like I'm looking to the left and I hate that so what I'm gonna do right click on the video capture device go to transform flip horizontally and now it lines up with what I'm doing it's just way easier to keep track of like your movements and everything I don't know it drives me crazy when it's not like that when you grab the edge here it only lets you drag it like this right you can't free drag it and if you want to free drag it all you have to do is hold control and shift and now I can free drag anywhere I want. So if I want it to be super small up here, if I want it to be the whole screen, any like, you know, otherwise if, if you're not holding shift and control and you try to drag it around, it's just not formatted right. And it'll stay at that like squared out format. But if you want it to fit, you have to hold shift and control and then drag it around. So in my case, I just want a little me up in the top left where you can see or you could easily move it to the top right, bottom right, wherever you want. Now for this one, this is our YouTube scene, so we need a screen capture because it'll capture our entire screen. Because we want to show like basically the YouTube, right? Okay, now you can see that my Google has replaced everything and like, you know, my camera is no longer there. That is because sources work kind of like layers in Photoshop to where whatever's on the top layer is going to be like, you know, on the top layer per se. So now if you drag your video capture device over everything, you're going to be on top of that. You know what I mean? So for starters, I do not want this top, like, you know, my bookmarks and all that shit in the tab. So what I do, I hold shift and alt, not shift and control, but shift and alt. That like kind of, it allows you to cut off the screen, right? So if I was to do shift here, I'm doing shift and control right now. Now I can kind of drag the screen, but it'll stay formatted. Whereas if you do alt and shift, it allows you to kind of cut off whatever you don't want to be seen. In my case, the my bookmarks. And then I can go back to shift control. And then drag it back up. And same thing with the bottom taskbar down here. I don't want that to show either. So I just drag it up a little bit. And then back to shift control to reformat the screen. And now it looks good. And now I can go to YouTube and watch whatever, react to whatever. I can... I can drag me up here, 
watch whatever video. You know, this is the basics in terms of what you have to do for your scene. Now, let's go ahead and add some other things. You always want to have an alert box for, like, you know, whenever you get a follow or anything like that. It'll pop up on screen saying whoever followed, blah, blah, blah. Super important. You could drag it to wherever, make it as big or as small as you want. You always want to have it at the top layer, though, because you want it to be over whatever screen that you have. Some other important ones are chat box. So, so here's my chat box. I can go ahead and shift it, make it about smaller than smaller than my webcam here. So if people were talking, you would be able to see their chats, you know, pop up right here, right under my screen. And there you go. If you wanted a border for your camera, they're super easy to add. Let me go ahead and see if I have one. First, you have to find a border that's like an actual PNG. So this one looks like an actual PNG. When you click on it, the background goes away. That's how you can tell if it's an actual PNG. So you save it as a um, box test. Now you choose that image here. For whatever reason, it's huge, so we just have to shift it down. And, you know, as long as we're holding shift and control, we can format it right. Then we can just kind of drag it over around here. Make it to be, like, right perfectly around the face cam there, and boom. It looks like it's kind of built in with my face cam. Because it's a PNG, it's like, you know, it allows you to have a proper border, if that makes sense. There's a bunch of different other sources that you could use here on Streamlabs, but to to be honest, these are like the important ones. You shouldn't worry about any of the other ones because you don't want to like, you know, clutter your screen or whatever. So now that you have, this is your YouTube one, you have your YouTube scene set up, so you can go click on your Minecraft scene and go back to YouTube anytime, and then like, you know, it'll automatically save your screen capture and everything so that, you know, it's ready for you to watch your YouTube videos. That's the benefit of creating different scenes like this so you can easily switch back and forth and you don't have to like change directly while you're streaming all right let's go ahead and make a video game screen first you have to make sure that you have the video game like up and running so in this case i'm just going to use minecraft because it's one of the few games i have so now my minecraft is open and now i need to go to the plus add this as a source and you don't want to use a screen capture for video games because it like adds a delay and makes it it takes away from the quality a little bit when you're like you know doing intensive games. That's why you always want to use a game capture. I always do capture specific window because I don't want to like accidentally grab the wrong shit. Minecraft, close. And then once I open it again, it brings it up. So now I shift control, drag it around. That way I can fit it in my screen properly. Now, boom. So I just want all four corners to match because there's nothing that I necessarily want to cut off with this. And now I want to go ahead and add my webcam. Um, if you've already added the source, it'll pop up add existing source. And you can add the source, but you still have to flip the camera again for whatever reason. So transform, flip horizontally, boom. Let me open my Minecraft again, boom. Now it's there. Now again, you could add the chat box and all of your other different, whatever else you feel like you need for your stream. Like I said, it's not really that important, but chat box is definitely a good idea to use. Drag it under your monitor, or I mean, under your webcam. Shift control. Something extremely important that I wanted to teach you about your webcam. So like for, it's kind of a bad example for me because I don't have a lot of shit in the background, but let's say this webcam was way bigger and like I was smaller. You would do the same thing that we did earlier to get rid of the bookmarks on YouTube. Just hold shift and alt and it'll kind of like cut your camera off. So then you can get rid of all this extra space there that's like, you know, part of your background, part of your room, whatever the case may be that you don't necessarily want there. And now, you know, it's more centered on me versus shit in the background, if that makes sense. And if your game ever goes away when you're doing like, you know, game capture, all you have to do is reopen your game. And when you start playing it again, it'll come back. Last thing I need to show you guys is my settings. And I'm not really going to be explaining these settings too much just because it's taken me years to figure out like the proper settings to use. But just pause the screen and copy these settings at any given time. 
general, nothing's important. Stream, you want to make sure that you have, you know, your Twitch link to it. That way you can directly stream. And you won't have to worry about a stream key or anything like that. Output, you want to have 2500 as your video bitrate. You want to make sure you have the right encoder. Sometimes, you know, it's smart to do like a couple test streams to see which encoder is best for you. You want to make sure you have like your right folder set up for wherever you want your recordings to go. You want to make sure you have this is your encoder and MP4 recording format to give you the best quality. Audio. You want to make sure that your desktop audio device is the same thing that you're using to like hear audio with. That way, whatever you hear, the people watching your stream can hear as well. For example, like if you're using these are the headphones that are plugged into my microphone. So this is my default sound setting. So anything on my computer goes through my headphones. So if I have this selected, that means anything that I play on my computer, like YouTube or anything like that, for example, video game music or video game noise, anything that you hear on my computer will translate to the stream as well because it's the same thing selected. Whereas if I had it, you know, this is my monitor speaker, nothing will come out my monitor speaker because my, my audio settings on my computer are still set to the headphones. This is just specifically for what the stream hears. And unless it's the same thing, the stream won't hear what you hear. Mic, you want to make sure it's whatever mic you use. And you can see right here, you know, you don't want... Okay, I'm pretty close and talking to the mic, but you want to try to make sure that your voice always stays in the yellow, but never really goes to the red because then it kind of sounds harsher. But, you know, you don't want to talk too soft either because then it kind of doesn't even go to the yellow and it just it just doesn't sound good. So it takes a couple times of you to like, you know, do a couple fake streams, like don't actually go live or anything like that, but just practice streaming pretending like you're streaming to not only practice your personality but to test all of your settings and make sure everything sounds good video you know basic canvas sizes all this stuff is self-explanatory hot keys this is completely up to you i don't use any hot keys not really important for me some of this stuff is important so just make sure that you copy all of these settings Stream delay is an option. It, it's a good idea, especially if you're doing like competitive Fortnite or any type of competitive game where you don't want stream snipers. The longer delay, the less likely people are to like find where you are in the video game and stream snipe you. Automatically reconnect just means like if you were to lose an internet connection for a half a second, do you want to automatically reconnect and go live again or do you want to just end the stream? If you want to automatically go live again, then have enabled. Default, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, that's all of the settings that you need. These are the important ones that you want to make sure that you have. The ones in advance. These in video. And these output settings. Other than that, everything is completely up to you and it's not really that important. Now that your OBS is set up and ready for you to stream on, let's talk about the most difficult part of this. Like I mentioned earlier, there are millions of wannabe streamers, so how are you going to find viewers? The answer to that question is simple, marketing. The biggest problem with Twitch or Kick is the fact that neither of them have any form of algorithm. An algorithm is the science behind any platform that determines what content viewers will see. For example, the TikTok algorithm determines exactly what you will see on your For You page. So what does that mean? Basically, that means Twitch nor Kick will ever put viewers in front of your stream. They are both built on a rich get richer type of system, meaning that if you don't already have viewers, you will never reach new people on the platform. With that being said, you need to take this action into your own hands. You need to take your content and post it on other platforms such as TikTok, YouTube Shorts, X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram Reels, etc. All these platforms have algorithms that you can use in order to reach new viewers. When you reach these new viewers on other social media platforms, you will be getting more exposure for you and your streaming brand, and eventually you could start to drive this traffic to your live stream. But how could you speed this process up? How could you start to grow faster? Well, your growth is entirely dependent on algorithms, and that's exactly why my management program is designed around boosting your algorithm to get you seen by more people. For example, the TikTok algorithm loves when you get engagement from high follower accounts. When you join any of my tiers, you will get a like and a comment on multiple high follower TikTok accounts, boosting your algorithm and getting TikTok to recommend your content to more people. I also work with you directly to help you create the best funnel possible, meaning you have the best chances of driving these people from these TikToks to your next stream. Not only do you get likes and comments from high follower accounts on TikToks, YouTube Shorts, etc., you will also get retweets from high follower accounts on X for every single tweet. You should be tweeting out every time you go live, and you will get likes and retweets from multiple high follower accounts, giving you exposure for your streams directly. Marketing your streams is definitely the hardest 
hardest part about live streaming. However, if you use other social media algorithms to your advantage, you can use these platforms to reach new people and then eventually turn them into loyal viewers to your stream. I know I didn't touch too much about the how to actually grow part, but I'm making a new video specifically on how to grow on Twitch in 2024, which will be my next video coming out on this channel. If it hasn't already released, then keep a lookout for that video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you don't know, it's been a lifelong goal of mine to reach 100,000 subscribers, and I have a huge video plan for when I reach that milestone. I have had what most would consider a troubled upbringing, and I will be telling my full life story when I reach this goal. It's not to gain sympathy or pity in any way. In fact, I am extremely thankful for the rough situations that I was put through because it has given me the proper perspective I needed to become successful in life. There is always an excuse if you want there to be one. Do not create excuses, create reasons, and then develop solutions for those reasons. If you are not growing on Twitch, it's not necessarily something that you are doing wrong, more so what you're not doing. Even if you can't join my Patreon program, I have multiple free videos here on my channel, and I'll look forward to helping you grow. Again, thank you a lot.